Dobar dan svima iz Velog Sureda i Zagreba. Ja se nadam da se dobro čujemo. Ja sam Jasna Jelinek. So, hello everybody from Velux office in Zagreb. I hope you can all hear me well. Today's webinar will be held in English because uh, we have special guest from Denmark. Architect Nicolas Roy will join us uh, in a few uh, minutes with his lecture today. But uh, before we start, I would like to give you a few uh, notes about today's webinar. Uh, for those who already uh, attended our webinars, you know the procedure, but there are many of uh, new attendees today. I'm really uh, happy to say that we had more than 600 registrations, so I would like to thank uh, Croatian Chamber of Architecture, Hrvatska Komora Arhitekata, for great support in organization and uh, 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 thank you really all for all your registration and uh, support over the years because this is our sixth year of uh, organizing webinars together with Chamber of Architecture. So it's really a pleasure today that we can um, host uh, uh, another lecture with the uh, external lecturer, Nicolas Roy. But uh, let me just tell you before I introduce him to you that uh, we will have uh, 45 minutes of lecture. Uh, during the lecture, you can leave your questions in the chat on the side. I hope you can see it. And after the lecture, you will uh, receive a link to a survey where you can leave us your details your email and uh, your name because right now you joined in anonymously so we don't know who exactly is present here uh, and then uh, you will fill out short survey and as answer a few questions uh, this will not take you more than 10 minutes and you will receive certificate for attending the webinar which you can use for credit points with the chamber that's the usual procedure, that's how we always do it. So those who already attended our webinars, you will know the, the drill. But uh, not to waste any time with, uh, with the practicalities, uh, let me introduce you to Nicolas Roy, an architect and senior advisor of Velux Group, Group's Knowledge Center in Denmark. Uh, they are dealing with daylight, energy and indoor climate. Nicholas is really a skilled specialist in the field of building performance simulations. And he's uh, always responsible for development and dissemination of, of the software we are talking about today, Daylight Visualizer. So in many architectural practices today, uh, daylight simulations became a norm and uh, more and more demanded. So this is why we organized today's lecture to um, introduce you to, to our software, which you can freely uh, for free download, and uh, some other tools that Nicolas will talk about and compare them. Nicolas is also responsible uh, and as a uh, so organizer at Velux Daylight Symposium. He's also a contributor there, giving lectures. And uh, dealing with investigations, uh, effects of daylight on buildings and people, and new ways to prescribe and evaluate daylight in general. Uh, Nicholas also received the uh, Society and Light and Lighting Leon Gaster Award in 2016. So uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, invite Nicholas to start with his presentations. I'm really happy to have him here today. Nicholas. Thank you, Jasna, and uh, hello, everybody. I'm glad that uh, so many of you have uh, registered, and uh, I hope that, that many of you have actually shown up. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the nice introduction, uh, Jasna, and I'm happy to, uh, to give you today a simple introduction to daylight simulation in buildings. Um, I prepared, uh, oh, let me just put myself on, on the presentation here. Um, yeah, so I've prepared my talk into five segments uh, where first of all we'll look into how to uh, measure daylight, uh, what are the different metrics uh, you can use. 
Then I would like to talk about the important factors that are influencing uh, daylight conditions in buildings and that are subsequently important to take into account when you do uh, daylight simulations. Then uh, look into a uh, different performance indicator. Uh, how do you actually quantify or, or put some numbers into uh, daylight performance in, in buildings? Um, and, and then we'll go uh, looking closely at how the daylight provisions can be uh, evaluated according to EN 17037, um, but together with the daylight factor method. Um, well, I could have covered both, but I, I believe that those who already know about the climate based uh, method or have the tools to do so, then, you know, it's it's not so much of an introduction. Uh, but if ever there's a need uh, for, for going more into detail also in this area, please let Yesna know in, in this survey and uh, I'll be happy to come back. Um, then I have some examples uh, from Data Visualizer uh, to try and show um, how our software can be used to evaluate the norm uh, and also a short tutorial uh, that show how, how it can be done quite easily actually. So without further waiting, um, I would like to talk about these uh, measures of daylight. So one of them that you are probably familiar with is the illuminance uh, and that is measured in lux and you can go around with a lux meter and, and do some uh, physical measurement in, in the buildings, uh, both outside uh, in inside the buildings actually. Um, but this is what has been used to prescribe, say, what are the lighting requirements for space. Uh, for a very long time <clears throat> and as such uh, kind of have its roots you know to people working on paper and needed a certain amount of light to read on on a vertical uh, no sorry horizontal work plane uh, but it is still today the the kind of performance indicator that we use to evaluate how much daylight will be present uh, in the building um, and an example of, of a performance indicator that's been used uh, also much before uh, simulation tools were available is the daylight factor. Apparently it has been invented about 100 years ago. Um, and it's a, it's a simple measurement that under overcast sky condition, you measure how much light is available, where the sky is not obstructed by anything. Um, and then inside the space at, at different places. And uh, that gives you a daylight factor value, uh, which is a relative measurement. So it doesn't tell you absolute amount of light, but it does tell you um, that you will have 2% the amount of light, uh, you know, available outside. So that has for a very long time and still today uh, is used as a way to prescribe daylight provisions in, in the buildings. Um, and and it's a simple indicator, so it's it's one simulation actually that that you get the information from. It's an illuminance simulation where you have this uh, exactly equation uh, being drawn, and uh, it's done under overcast sky, which means that the actual orientation or time of day where the the sun position would be affected is actually neglectable in this simulation. So again, it's a very simple one, and it's kind of universally applicable uh, but you do need of course to take into account direct sun if, if for example you are in Croatia uh, where in some part of the country uh, direct sun is, is predominant in, in some part of the, the year or, or, or maybe even yearly run. I'm not a super familiar with, with the climate in Croatia but I know that in summertime it's, it's really good. Um, so yeah so, so that's one of them. Um, as an example to illuminance uh, being used uh, as, as a metric. Uh, then we have the luminance uh, and this is actually what we do perceive with our eyes. So it's the amount of light that's emitted from, from surfaces as opposed to the amount of light received on surfaces for the illuminance. So you see that now in this rendering uh, from Daylight Visualizer, you see the, the color of the different material properties, uh, whereas this uh, illuminance rendering was just in, in a gray scale. And that's not because the model was just made of, of white or gray surfaces, it's because illuminance is just the intensity of light falling on the surfaces, 
was the luminance actually take into account well the the specularity uh, effect of of the surfaces so the kind of mirror reflection you get say on glass or, or very shiny surfaces uh, and then the actual color uh, so you get a very photorealistic view and, and that's of course what you experience with your eyes uh, in, in the space. So this is actually relevant for visual comfort uh, analysis, but also for, for good design, because obviously people don't just go around with their head down looking at, at a work plane, they actually experience a space in, in 3D. So that's why with Daylight Visualizer, we didn't just want to be able to calculate things on the work plane, but also to be able to visualize the actual illumination of the uh, architectural volumes. <clears throat> so this is, you can capture with HDR a camera, also real spaces, uh, where you take a series of images at different exposure from a fixed point of view and then combine that into a software. And you can, now it's an example from, from a simulation tool, but you could do the same here uh, with, with these HDR images to detect the risk of glare. And now in this example, I have the direct sun uh, in the field of view, so the glare is intolerable. Uh, it's very strong glare. Um, in this case, it's a situation uh, with the, the direct sun yeah, quite present in this courtyard, but it's not directly in your field of view. You also get an intolerable glare rating here, but it's just on the limit of, say, being detectable and, and intolerable. Um, at 0 0.45 is the limit, and this is 0 0.4552. And here's another situation with sun, but there we're way below the uh, limit, and then it has imperceptible glare. So when you want to look into glare, it's actually needed to have some some uh, yeah smarter uh, metrics to do so. And this is called a DGP with with Eval Glare, and this is a workflow in the Rhino with with Grasshopper. It's available in Radiance as well. Um, then uh, the factors influencing daylight now that we've covered the, the two basic metrics with how you can measure uh, daylight. So first of all is of course the, the climatic condition and we know that, that daylight change a lot but then what are the probability of, of the different um, you know conditions and, and what does it mean also from say uh, energy take design or thermal uh, performance design is of course uh, needed to take into play. Uh, but you see here with this example that the overcast sky condition, when it comes to light, you know, uh, these, these three characteristic condition of overcast, where the, this is a hemispherical view of the sky here above a uh, picture. Uh, that's actually our office um, in, in Arsam in, in Denmark, and then some trees around. Um, and then you see the false color, but what you can see is that in 360 degree around, the light intensity is pretty much the same. And then from the horizon to the zenith, you kind of have a ratio of one to three. And this was not really a perfect overcast sky, it was a bit noisy, but but they still do uh, support, say, the, the um, yeah, the, the science that's described the uh, overcast sky. Then the intermediate one is actually end up spreading the high intensity of the sun over these these brighter cloud areas so it it, it has a strong directionality but it is softer uh, than say the direct sun or clear sky where the direct sun is a moving point source very strong uh, but what's interesting also to to note for the direct sky is that the zenith is actually the darkest point in the sky where the horizon is about 10 times brighter uh, unlike the overcast sky, which has a zenith three times brighter than the horizon. Um, yeah, so so these, of course, uh, lighting conditions are very important to understand as well as, as the orientation of the building. Um, here I have an example of, of what it means when you intervene in, in different climates. So if you have an international practice, of course, it's relevant to study. Uh, this is a way uh, to visualize how much light there is at the different period of the year. Uh, and you can see that the climate like uh, Rome in Italy has a much more stable uh, condition for the design than say uh, north of Sweden where you have daylight 
full day in the summer months and then none at some part of the year. Then the external obstruction uh, matters. In this example here, yeah, there is a fence uh, placed outside the building. Uh, and in the first case, there is none. Uh, so you see that these uh, values are obtained for median daylight factor and the average daylight factor. And when we do add the obstruction into account for the second case here, then the daylight performance is reduced by half. So if you do a daylight analysis of a building and it's you know in the middle of nowhere, uh, well, I mean, your 3D model has no obstruction, uh, but your building is actually in a suburban or uh, urban uh, position, then obviously you will have a, a huge error in your simulation. So you need to take that into account. Uh, when it comes to the light from the roof, you have less obstruction. Uh, so usually you are less uh, affected, but obviously in this case here, it's combining the facade obstructed with, with the light from the roof. Uh, so you can take all this complexity into account into the 3D model that you prepare. And you see here that the performance um, is quite well, uh, and it's because now we have a good opportunity to distribute the daylight where we want in the room as opposed to only using one of the facades. So if you can use multi-facade in the roof, then you have a lot of flexibility in giving a better uh, daylight uniformity. Um, as you can see, the score has, has increased tremendously. And, and in some cases, like doing classrooms and so on, this is something that you want to pay some attention to. And in some cases, it's, it's less important because the use of the space is more flexible. Um, another factor is the material properties, uh, but of course it, it doesn't mean that you should always go with, with white and bright surfaces, uh, but you need to take into account that it, it affects say, both the daylight performance, but also the luminous impression that the room has. So I have seen great architecture, uh, for example, Las Courage in, in the Netherlands. It is uh, designs almost with every surfaces in black, but he puts so much glazing uh, into, yeah, and in, in the good position for, for the right volume that, that the space are not dark uh, per se. So, but, but in, you know, it's something you need to take into account and it does uh, affect the result um, to to a good uh, level. Then the position and the size of the window is 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 obviously you know uh, going to affect your daylight tremendously, um, and and it does. Uh, so if you do, uh, and what is interesting is to see also the relation between the average and the median, because the average is kind of a little bit less sensitive, I will say, to the quality of daylight because it doesn't really, let's take into account the distribution of the daylight conditions. So the average year is swinging a bit less, you know, uh, between these cases, but the median is reduced by more than half when you do put all the windows uh, in this corner here. Uh, they behave a little bit better when you put them all on, on, on the same facade here because there's a better view relation towards the depth of the room this way than when you put them in the corner. Uh, but of course, the best result is achieved when, when you have the best distribution. Um, but that's not to say again that this is the only way to design, but these kind of notions, um, you know, help you sometimes to, to reach the right performance uh, that you need to reach for for the regulation or just for for what you want to do exactly for for the daylight conditions in the room. Um, so that was some of the main factors uh, that I wanted to highlight and then I'll say a few words about you know how do you evaluate the daylight performance. Um, and of course, there, there's more ways like the, the glare and so on, but here we'll stick to the basics. Uh, and then you have the daylight factor, which is this uh, metric I, I, I explained, uh, looking into the relative uh, measurement between inside and outside uh, under overcast sky. And it's represented like this uh, with a work plane. Um, and here you have a situation with two skylights in this classroom and here I have uh, six skylights, a little bit difficult to see as the dotted line above. 
Um, and, and the goal was to reach a daylight factor average of 5% uh, back in those days. Uh, and then also to pay attention to the uniformity indicator, because obviously all the kids in this cl classroom, they deserve to have similar, uh, yeah, you could say lighting uh, condition. So there was a much better uh, uniformity score achieved there. You will never achieve anything close to one. I would say 0 0.5 is actually extremely uniform. Um, and then a good value for both the average and, and the median daylight factor. And, and then we have the daylight autonomy. So what, first of all, you can observe is that all of these metrics, they are represented in a very similar way. Uh, but this first one have this uh, kind of value of, of daylight factor, which is your, your performance. Uh, whereas this one here is going to tell you about the occurrence of a specific um, daylight level target. So for example, daylight autonomy, uh, daylight availability that correspond to the percentage of the uh, occupied time. So it could be all the daylight hours in the year or it could be for say office hour or classroom hours. And usually the target will be 300 lux, uh, but it could be anything that the design sets uh, the requirements to. Uh, and then you would like to achieve that for 50% of the year and 50% of the space. This is kind of the spatial daylight autonomy uh, that you could find in IESNA, for example, in, um, in, in America. And then that's the one that you find in the European norm as the method with the climate-based uh, metric. So in this one, what, what you find then is that for all of these different sensor points or measurement points on the, on the work plane, uh, you end up with an average daylight autonomy of 59% and, and a median of 63 uh, so that means that, you know, you, you would pass a requirement. You have 63% of the um, yeah, point on the space that have 300 locks for 50% uh, of the year. And then with the six sky light, we reach a value of 82% actually. So you're almost here uh, going to be uh, having a, a quite generous daylight autonomy uh, with very few needs for turning uh, electrical lighting on. Um, and then the useful daylight illuminance is, is quite similar to daylight autonomy, but then it looks into, well, you can divide it into different ranges. So you could be interested to look into the range of illuminance value that occurs into 300 to 3000. Uh, and then you could also be un interested in the one that occurs between 100 and 300, and then the one below 100 because it could mean a different electrical lighting strategy at these different level with, of course, the one at 300 to 3000 where you don't need electrical lighting. So it's kind of the same principle, really, uh, but you can divide it into different uh, ranges that hopefully provide you with design information. Then if we look at the simple method with the, the European norm, and some of the foundations that it take to, to set these uh, climatic target, even though we're using a daylight factor method. So the daylight factor target, uh, which is the one you, you, you need to probably um, be focusing on, in some places you might also add the minimum one um, to be uh, relevant. And basically, you need to have an internal illuminance of 200 lux for 50% of daylight hours during the year. And then they say below that it needs to be over 50% of the relevant flow area. And then a minimum target needs to be achieved for 95% of the flow area. So the 50% the target uh, of the flow area is for 300 lux and the 95% target is for 100 lux. So in this example here below, which might be for Germany, uh, we end up with, with the daylight target at 2.2 and then a minimum one at 0 0.7. So I need a median daylight factor of 2.2 and then I need 95% of the work plane to be 0 0.7 or above. Um, and this is on the notion of, well, as it's highlighted in yellow above here, we, they not me because I was not part of this process, but they have looked at the 
um, climatic data from from you know recognized data set, and then they look at the external diffuse horizontal illuminance. And then they derive that 50% of the year there is so much light available outside and then they can derive using this value. So for example, 13,900 lux uh, is the average, well, median level for, for the light available from diffuse sky outside in, in this location. And then, you know, you can draw your daylight factor target based on the fact you want 300 lux. And it varies with location and it do follow kind of a, a latitude basis. So the more north you are, the more uh, higher the target daylight factor is. But it's actually based on climatic data. So there is some exceptions because, you know, climate don't follow purely linear uh, the latitude. So I'm wondering if this was not done actually here exactly with the, the south to the northern location. Um, and then you do see that the line do vary, but it has a tendency to go up both for the minimum target and the uh, default target. And then if we look at Croatia, we're going to end up probably with 0 0.6 and 1.8 um, daylight factor uh, target. I could be off by a, a decimal. Uh, you can correct me if that's the case. Um, software tools. Um, so yeah, that was explaining the norm, um, the basis for the provision. Then Max Tilburg was at the symposium in Paris and he has made a review of how many tools are capable of evaluating the different requirements in the norm. Uh, and then he came up to these conclusion that you do need powerful software tools to work with EN. Uh, 17037, uh, he has reviewed the tools. There's numbers of tools that can be used. That's a good news. <laughs> and then there's always a balance between the features and the complexity and the ease of use. Uh, so actually different users need different tools. Uh, so that was his conclusion and I would even add to this that different users need to use, you know, one of the different method exactly that, that the standard proposed between the spatial daylight autonomy or the daylight factor following the target that I explained that I, you know, been stated in, in, in the European norm document for, for the country. And then uh, this is a little bit how he built his, his analysis. So he presented whether or not the software support the feature and how well, how well it supports it. Um, so I'm not going to go into the detail, but, but you can see that Daylight Visualizer, for example, uh, can do the daylight factor really well. It doesn't do the climate base, at least not for now. We're actually implementing this in, in the fall this year. Uh, sunlight can be done by with a manual approach or you do place the building everything correctly and then you simulate with direct sun and then you record yourself uh, looking at the rendering, the direct sun in the room. Uh, then glare is not available for now, there's something further down the line. Uh, but actually the standard with the glare analysis is mainly if there's a risk of glare, you need to have a shading protection and then uh, there is a table with the value for the different uh, shading products available out there. So it's it's more this approach you would take rather than a simulation one. Uh, so data visualizer is very good for, for visualization. It can do advanced simulation like Sun Tunnel. It's still in the making. It's available in the latest version, uh, but we're going to make it easier and much more stable. I will still wait a bit to, to play with that. Uh, we're going to put some tutorials uh, on YouTube when, when it's uh, perfectly available. Uh, how it's integrability, so you can use it with many software I'll show later. Um, flexibility, well, it does what it does. You can already go outside these, these boundaries. It does have some nice reporting function, also supporting the European norm, uh, and then it's extremely user-friendly. There was some more software. Then an uh, example of uh, exactly in, in practice, the European norm here, yeah, that if I have 10% glazing, so I set it against this kind of old school requirement of having 10% glazing to flow ratio. And I think I don't have obstruction outside or it's a very minimal one if I do, so it's, it's nothing like 
it, it would be very, very fair. Um, so, but I think there was none actually. Uh, so, actually, if I place it just in in this room uh, and all on this uh, facade with the deeper end of the room this way, uh, then I reach a median daylight factor of 0 0.99. So I cannot pass any requirement with that. And I have the, the requirement uh, for the minimum over only 63% of the work plane. So it doesn't work. And, and I also put the mean here, the average just as, as a relation. So when I put the two window um, on the different facade here, then I end up with, well, a better uh, daylight target median, uh, closer to say what might be the target for, for this country, but still way below. And then the minimum has also improved, but not enough. Uh, but you can observe that the average on the other end has actually went down. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of totally dissing the average daylight factor in this presentation, but it's, it's okay because we need to move on from it. Um, and, and then in this uh, latest um, example here, um, it's 5% on the facade, and then I put 5% of glazing on the roof. And I know it sounds a bit commercial, but, but again, it's just to make the point that when you can use the roof and, and multiple facade, well, you will have an easier time to, to meet your target. Then, you know, at some point, even though you make the entire facade glaze, if the room is very deep, um, you will not be able to meet the, the norm. Um, and what is important also to, to note is that there is a perimeter on the work plane uh, of 0 0.5 from, from the wall. Uh, but the norm also talks about evaluating the daylight in, in the relevant area, which will be used for work or life, etc. So there's a certain, of course, still uh, interpretation to be done there, especially if you work with, with very large open space uh, yeah, building design. Uh, but here in this case, we exceed uh, every requirements really well. <clears throat> Let's see if that plays well. So that's a short uh, video uh, where I, I model a single family home. I know it's not IN architecture, uh, but this is the workflow when you want to model something in Daylight Visualizer. And, and actually when you work for an office or a classroom, you will find that, well, if you were drawing the most important room, you might actually be able to do this in the tool today uh, without needing to have an external 3D model. So if you know, some of you guys maybe don't work so much with CAD model or 3D model, so that will give you an easy way to, to evaluate sometimes your, your building, yeah, uh, even though they're not a, a residential building. But with this uh, modeler workflow, you can model uh, room by room basis or one story floor with, with only like perpendicular walls divisions, but you have quite flexible window placement um, and so on. Yeah, so I'll talk over the the video. I hope it's going to play. It was playing well uh, <laughs> when we made the rehearsal the other day. Yeah, it was working, but now it's not running yet. Yeah, no problem. I'll fetch it on the Internet and I'll play it from there. <clears throat> Just going to go to next slide. And then I'm um, find this video. Perfect. So, now it's on. Yeah. No panic at the disco. So um, first, um, yeah, let's look what the house looks like. Um, so it's this model, classic Denmark uh, house type. So then you draw the external wall uh, area. Then you can draw the inner wall divisions. It's going faster than you can do it now, uh, but it's just for the purpose of this tutorial. Then with the custom objects here, uh, we're just going to set some exactly boundary condition uh, around the house. Uh, so the analysis is. Um, 
accurate. Then let me just go back a little here. And the next step is to choose the roof type. So now it's too slow proof. So um, just draw the line here to say where the, the roof ridge should be. It's not 100% flexible, uh, but it can do many things. Then you open database a window and you lay out the window that you selected. You can copy paste elements. The next step is to set the surfaces. So for the European norm, you have some uh, fixed range. So um, the floor between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. So we use 0 0.3, ceiling 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, and, and the wall 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. So um, you can use uh, these range of values. And then, you know, in Daylight Visualizer, it just set these RGB factors to, to 0 0.5, if, if that's what you want. But in the newer version that will be released soon, you will find that we have given these um, yeah, default material with these 10% increment for reflectance, make the workflow faster. You can also set the pain transmittance to the, the right uh, values for the products that you have and adjust the exterior ground reflectance. <clears throat> Then you set a camera, and in this case, we need to set the plan view height. And choose a daylight factor under the render tab, set resolution and render quality, and then we'll be rendering. When the render is done, you can, I'm going to pause it here, um, you can click on zone because it has a camera and a zone output. And uh, when you click on the zones, then um, yeah, you, you're going to have this chance to create a report and in the modeler, the zones will be created automatically for each uh, room that you divided with the inner walls. Uh, but if you work with imported models, you need to create those yourself uh, and give them a specific uh, material name for the zones and then make sure the program know it's a zone. Uh, we have tutorials for this on YouTube. It's actually quite simple. Um, and then you, you can do the same and that's how you create a nice report with some detailed statistics for each of the different rooms or important part of the buildings. <clears throat> you click on generate report and now we've made some improvements so some of these things would be different but in the European norm you have this uh, table and let's see Croatia. Uh, 0 0.6 is your minimum target, 95% of the, uh, the work plane. And 1.8 is your um, median daylight factor target. If you was to reach a median of 2.9, it would need it would mean you have 500 lux achieved instead of 300. And if you achieve 4.4, then you're at 750. But if you want to use some, let's say you achieve 5% daylight factor, then you can multiply it by this 17,000 year and actually establish the actual lux levels you will have in, in, your, in, in, in the space for 50% of the year because that's your median external diffuse illuminance in, in climatic data for Croatia. So you might want to take a note of that. So a 10% daylight factor will mean 1,700 lux uh, for 50% of the year for you. Um, yeah. Then you can check these values uh, in the report. So this was for the UK, this video. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, for the zone, you will have some statistics and you can see if you're above. Back then we were using that little calc function to check the 95%, but now it's one of the default statistics value. So that function is not there anymore. All right. So that was it for YouTube. Then the uh, daylight visualizer. So our free professional daylight simulation tool for architects and engineers and builders and also used very much in, in uh, education. And you can download it as this link here, velux.hr slash viz. And a little bit more about the tool. So it's something I've been working on at Velux uh, ever since I started in, in 2005. Um, and the ambition has been to make basically a simulation tool that's as robust as Radiant, but much more user friendly. Um, and and it's, it's not me who develops this. I'm not a computer guru. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an architect. 
but I was so fortunate that that uh, my my good colleague uh, Per Arnold he had already found a computer guru, and that's Henrik van Jensen, and he's the chief scientist at at Luxion, and uh, he is the the one with the, the all the technology, and and he has this uh, simulation engine called Dali, and. Uh, Enric, he has won a technical Oscar for his work in in uh, in the cinema industry with the uh, Avatar, and uh, but the technical Oscar was for Lord of the Rings. So this kind of translucent material on on the skin of Golem, um, and and well, he's also he's a big name, say in 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 that computer graphics world. Um, and he's actually worked the algorithm called photomapping, which is also very much used in, in radiance today. Uh, but he's not the one who has developed it into radiance. Somebody that that you know took his uh, and, well, what he wrote, the research, etc., and then made the radiance implementation for it. And uh, they are the makers of KeyShot which is a very well also leading edge uh, computer visualization software. It's used many different industries, uh, automotive, uh, jewelry, uh, marketing uh, for sure. Uh, and then they, they do this project for us, uh, Data Visualizer. Um, we're actually one of the first project that they, they have worked um, in this company. And with the daylight visualizer, the goal is to make it possible to calculate and, and visualize the daylight, like I mentioned. And uh, I'll give a few project examples, not necessarily how I've been using the, the tool, uh, but how my colleagues or, or architects have been using it out there. So some of my, my colleague Miroad in, in building industry uh, is actually some very close to your region. Uh, and always takes his vacation in, in Croatia. Uh, so Milorad, he, um, he worked on this project and the starting point was a, a school building with very few facade windows. And then of course it was going to have a hell of a lot of electrical lighting to lit all the volumes. So he made a proposal with some flat roof in, in that slice of the building. And that was about one day of work and uh, they, they, they bought the proposal for us that led to 196 uh, products being used and for them it led to that fantastic uh, school. Uh, so you see here the electrical lighting just becomes the decoration and the window acts like the luminaire. And you know they will provide you plenty of daylight, but also they will provide you a changing experience, both in terms of say color. Well, uh, not like dynamic, like LED lighting, right? Uh, but they they provide a very dynamic experience compared to say a bunch of fluorescent tube up there. Um, so very nice project. Another uh, projects um, in this case we use both say standard uh, architectural uh, rendering could have been key shot in this case this is a uh, renderings from v-ray uh, which maybe some of you are familiar with and here we show kind of with a, a very yeah marketing language what will be the difference between a room with or without the, the window and the objective is to use the simulation tool but to do it with kind of a certain rigor and and to make objective comparison so it should have exactly the same uh, material for the room and the same lighting environment and the same exposure for the image when we create these comparisons. Sometimes we need to tweak it a little because the difference is too big, uh, but then it's supported by these calculations. So now you can show the customer what it will look like, but then you also have these numbers uh, that that you yeah you can prove that you know. If you want a lot of daylight, well, here you go, 12% uh, daylight factor compared to, to the meager one that you had before. And then they also go and make some tweak for the architecture in this case, and, and you know, that became the project. Um, this is a larger building, and in this case, we look into the effect of two different panes. So how will it affect the daylight condition? Um, I mean, that's quite straightforward because, of course, when you have a different transmittance, um, if the distribution is the same, you could just apply correction factors. 
but it's extremely quick to demonstrate it with the tool, uh, and then it's visual. But of course, you you at least need one simulation to make your uh, your assumption. And here I'm looking not into different transmittance, uh, but I'm looking into an existing space and then come with three different proposal. It's an atrium in a class, not a classroom, but a school. So a space where the kids go during the break, spend a lot of time. Um, yeah, both breaks, uh, lunch and in, in between classes. Uh, so, I mean, in my view, these spaces, they should try to bring some some qualities of nature inside. So here's a lot of daylight and fresh air. Um, and of course, then can come other factors like biophilic design and so on. Um, but then they can choose between these three solutions. And, and well, you see that they all achieve a slightly different daylight factor. One is a, called a long light uh, and then two solution with ridge lights and one that has PV on the side. I think they ended up settling on solution C. And then I made that link between the daylight factor, uh, achieve here, median and, and the luminance like I've been talking about with the median external diffuse. So I can kind of predict the 50% of the year would have so much uh, lux levels. This is an example from uh, from an architect in Denmark. When I think the oldest one I have here um, in in the set, and it's a kindergarten, and it's got this roof, um, and it was almost done with the design. Uh, that was in 2009, I believe. Um, and and then we suggested to make an analysis of it because we were it's very close to our head office. So yeah, we and I think we might have been sponsoring the project. Um, but not the design, not involved in, in the design. Um, and, and then, so we made this analysis for, for the architect and, and we found that, well, it was quite nice. You know, you can see very few dark spots and there's actually a nursery where the children should just sleep. So there should not be any lights there and then some practical spaces. So, but we do find that the small gymnasium, yeah, well, or, or activity room, uh, doesn't have window uh, except on the roof. Uh, but then the daylight factor is not super generous, uh, and a little bit the same for the canteen area. Uh, if you compare to this corridor here that has a little bit of overflow of light, so you see the the refinements were um, into the details here, and well, you see there's no longer this overflow of light. There's still plenty of light. But then we bring more in these key areas. So it was a level of, you know, that they could not do without the use of a simulation tool. Uh, I think that that got them on board to, to always use simulation tool to fine tune uh, the design for, for daylight. And that's some of the simulation back then and, and the picture of the realized project. And another one I bring in to show that, well, the tool is capable of, of rendering, say, uh, the character of daylight. So if you spot the shadow patterns here, uh, the highlight, little shadow in the highlight, you have the same here. Uh, there's a little highlight down there. Look, is also here. Uh, I mean, this was not done with using the same texture. I just, you know, I had the picture and, and then I set the model and I tried to set the colors and stuff the same. Uh, so there are some difference, even the model here, the staircase is not as, as wide, but otherwise, I mean, when it comes to the daylight, uh, the, the comparison is really good. And this house was evaluated with the, our active house scheme, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, this was the, the previous set of, of requirements, there's a new one now uh, in the 3.0 set. And then using these daylight factor and looking into the condition for all the different space in, in the house. And then if I should say a few things about, yeah, our new daylight visualizer compared to number two uh, is that the, the direct sun is much better implemented. So now you will get say the full illumination that, that comes from the direct sun and that was well, always important. Uh, we don't really have good reason why it, it wasn't there in the first, but I mean, when the number two was created, it was very daylight factor focus. And then the sun was mainly to make nice images. So yeah, that's what the developer would say. 
Um, but but it was important for us, of course, that that we have a daylight simulation tools that take into account the full uh, uh, you know effects of daylight. So I'm happy to say that now, comparing this is not picture comparison here, but when we compare to a picture, that these cases compare a lot better into taking the illumination of the sun. Um, because it's this two sun patch that that lit this volume now compared to leaving it a bit yeah gloomy back then. And this is uh, yeah very important because now we're capable of of simulating light pipes, and that means well it's pretty advanced because you can do it in in certain program, but they will simulate them like a electrical light source. So that means you have a IES file that represents a light source, and then you know, you are emit light from it, but then that corresponds to the design that it was measured with. It's not like something you can flexibly analyze, you know, a longer pipe or one that's on a different roof pitch or that there is obstruction outside. So with our tool, you will be able to have a much more flexible uh, approach to, to how you simulate light pipe with just like retracing your model. Of course, it requires some uh, certain skills to model the pipe correctly, but we'll make some models available. Uh, and it does capable of supporting now BSDF material, so also for complex fenestration system, it can be used for that, like light redirecting devices. <clears throat> oh, we're over time, so, but anyway, I think I'm, I'm wrapping up. So, a little bit like the details here of how you model the light pipe, but again, we'll make this available. You can support these file formats, uh, DWG, DXF, SketchUp, OBJ, and that actually makes you compatible with uh, most programs out there, um, even some some few more, here, because the DWG and DXF are almost kind of universal universal CAD exchange format, and OBJ is really good as well with with many software, and then this SketchUp for for those who use a free version of SketchUp, uh, like uh, students. Then we have this YouTube channel uh, for you guys to get some uh, tutorials. And then I just want to mention these couple of tools that, in my view, are good if you are interested in, in annual climate-based simulation. So we have Climate Studio for Rhino, Lightstanza for Revit, Honeybee for Rhino, but you know, I, I'd go for Climate Studio unless you want something free, but that you need a lot more uh, learnings and stuff. And then Radiance uh, for, for the nerds out there. Um, so thank you very much uh, for your time, and then we still have some time for uh, questions. Thank you, Nico. This was really very interesting. But uh, before we move on to questions, maybe I should uh, just uh, explain in Croatian how to get uh, certificates for uh, registration of credit points in Croatian Chamber of Architects, because there was few questions about that. Dakle, uh, svi koji uh, trebate potvrdu za komoru za upis bodova, Sada možete uh, putem linka koji sam ja ostavila u, u komentarima uh, otići na upitnik gdje ćete nam ostaviti svoje podatke da znamo od koje se bio i tko treba potvrdu i nakon toga ćete automatski dobiti uh, potvrde u mail. Isti taj link smo vam postali i mailom, tako da ako slučajno ne vidite naše sad ovdje komentare, pitanja, možete otići u svoj mailbox, svakako provjerite i neželjenu poštu i, i uh, spam folder promocije, isto uh, tamo se nalazi link na taj upitnik gdje onda znači odgovorite na nekoliko pitanja o zadovoljstvu sa webinarom i ostavite nam svoje podatke i mi vam pošaljemo potvrdu. So this was briefly an explanation about the procedure with the uh, certificates. And uh, you can now ask questions. Uh, Nicolas will gladly stay a few more minutes and uh, answer. I think I received one question uh, about the uh, things. Uh, one of the viewers is asking, are there things I should think about when I prepare a 3D model for daylight analysis? Because if you can take that one. 
Yeah, so I think what is important to, to take into account, there's obviously the, um, the factors. Uh, I mentioned these factors influencing uh, the daylight condition. So definitely the external obstruction and then the main uh, surface uh, material. Uh, so floor, walls and ceiling to make sure that, that you differentiate between those and the accurate window transmittance. Then I would also warn about the fact that, that you need to know how the windows are, uh, have been modeled. So basically how many polygon layers uh, are they modeled with? So if you usually make a window pane uh, with, with say like a rectangular um, yeah, extruded element, then you would have two layers of polygon. Um, and, and you need to know uh, exactly this factor so that you choose the right glass material in the daylight visualizer. So that would be glass solid if you have two layers. If you have only one layer, then you should use the glass surface, uh, which assume only exactly one layer of polygon. Um, and then at each layer of polygon, it, it goes through the glass surface model will multiply. Uh, so if you set to 0 0.8 and then you have four layers of polygon, for example, you have double pane both made with the solid and then you say it's glass surface 0 0.8 then it will do 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 you end up with just like 0 0.4 uh, the amount of light transmitted so it's very important to know that good we have a few more minutes so just one more question which is uh, published here in comments um, the question is about uh, uh, daylight in art galleries and museums um, uh, someone is asking how to uh, fulfill the standard of protection, UV protection of artworks in museums. Uh, yeah, I think the UV protection is probably something you would well, it depends how these requirements have been uh, stated. So you could have like a, a limit of, of say yearly illuminance uh, or yearly yeah it could be yearly illuminance values that that say a painting uh, should receive uh, i would imagine that if there are some specific uh, uv requirements uh, it might be more about making sure that that you have a uh, window pane that that blocks the amount of UV where uh, you don't want present in the space or to have yeah, a filter for it. But I, I would need more information, I think, to to give the proper answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have a question about cost of the software that you recommend. Uh, well, the daylight visualizer is free and um, I mean, definitely keep an eye for. Uh, well, it's it's very useful today and gives you a great introduction step um, to yeah do the daylight factor method. Uh, we have also improved for the next release, which should be uh, in the, in a couple of weeks. We have improved the workflow, so now you can uh, update a three D model while you are inside your VIS project. Uh, so all of these things would be very nice and, and when you get the climate based uh, engine available in the start of next year or the end of this year, but I, I'll say more start of next year, then it will be uh, extremely capable. Um, but the, these other tools uh, like um, Climate Studio, I think you need to re request a, co a quote for it, so uh, they actually don't disclose the price for it. But I would say it must be a minimum uh, thousand US dollars for for one license, and I think that's about the same price for uh, light stanza. Then um, Honeybee is free. It's a little bit harder to use. If you're familiar with Grasshopper or have someone who can use Grasshopper and Rhino really well, uh, it would be quite easy for him to uh, to get started. Uh, so then you have the, the the price of Rhino, but if it's already in, in the tool in the office, um, then you have Radiance, which is totally free, but but it's it's computer code. Um, there's good community forum for it called Radiance Online, uh, but otherwise it, it's pretty hardcore. 
Um, there's one tool I didn't list because I haven't tried it out, but it could be worth looking into if you use SketchUp. It's called DL Lite. Um, but yeah, definitely keep a close eye uh, for daylight visualizer and the climate base. And if what you want to do is the daylight factor approach, I think uh, yeah, daylight visualizer is, is extremely good for it. I would recommend you use version 2.8.4 until we make the new release because yeah otherwise the the beta version in between is is a little bit unstable uh and then hit our youtube channel or send me an email eventually if you have any problem um i'd be happy to support you guys yeah. great because we are officially out of time but just quickly uh with yes or no compatibility with nemechek and if not uh Alplan and nemechek or if not, would it would it become compatible? Well, let me check. I think there's different versions of it. You probably more likely refer to the BIM version. So it depends um, which uh, file format it can export to. But right now we're working at the IFC uh, file import, uh, and IFC is kind of the exchange format for for BIM uh, tools. So with it, we'll be able to support Revit and Archicad and probably Nemechek, but but again, you you probably the the user asking the questions might know the answer to that. And and then with this update, what we want to do is we want to also import all the material properties which is available into this IFC data uh, to again uh, ease the workflow. And if you should then have any change to the building design and want to evaluate that, then you have the option to export that again to IFC from Nemechek or, or Revit and then say update in Daylight Visualizer and usually, well, you're good to go unless you have bring new materials or, or new elements like that. You'll just like update the, the 3D model to the latest design. Um, and we also want to do with SketchUp to import the default reflectance and transmittance factor for the materials, so there could also be some workflow improvements there, and as well as OBJ uh, file. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Nicholas, and uh, thanks to everybody who, who participated. I hope you will fill out the questionnaire to get your certificates for participation. I wish you wonderful afternoon. Uh, thanks to Nicolas Roy once again. Uh, I hope to see you soon all in the next webinar that we plan for October. So have a nice day and stay well. Thank bye you. Bye.